All right, we're going to be taking a look at my Rambo First Blood 25th Anniversary Knife. Um, it's not really a review, although we are going to review it, because I've done a few things here to kind of customize this. So it's not exactly what you'd see if you bought this knife brand new. Okay, so the first thing we've got is um, the sheath. This is not the sheath that it comes with. The sheath that it comes with is actually this one right here. So you can see it's made of leather. It's actually a pretty nice sheath. Um, this one is uh, about probably an inch longer. It's not actually meant for this knife, obviously. But I had another cheap survival knife that went in here. That knife broke. So I've gone ahead and... Uh, used, uh, reused that sheath for this one, which I think works perfect. And the reason I did that is because this sheath is actually defective. Um, you can kind of see this little, uh, strap, leather strap here. It's way too small. It doesn't fit around the hilt here. So, um, it's actually defective. So, I was sold a defective, uh, collector's knife. Um, I didn't realize it at the time, but these knives, I've seen them go for around between $100 to $150 retail. And this was on sale at a, a store for about $60. So I was like, oh wow, that's a great deal. I know how much those normally cost. I'm going to go ahead and pick one up. Well, it turns out it was defective, and that's why they were discounting them. There's probably a whole batch of these that are defective, and they're just trying to unload them. Another thing that was wrong with it is the blade was tarnished, too. So, that's obviously why these were uh, discounted. Um, and that was fine for me because I wanted to use this as kind of more of a practical knife. It wasn't just going to be a looker sitting up on a shelf on display. I actually wanted to use it because it's replacing the other survival knife that I had that broke. Um, so, it's pretty cool. The other sheath didn't come with... Uh, a whetstone or a way to carry a whetstone so this one does which is nice it's kind of a throwback to those old school uh, 80s survival knives those real cheap like ten dollar ones um, which were kind of neat in their own way but you know it's a whetstone it's a way to sharpen the knife the other sheath didn't have that so, um, this is also it's made of like some sort of like nylon or some sort of synthetic material, but it's got a plastic, hard plastic uh, inner um, like shell, I guess you would, you would call it. So enough about the sheath, let's take a look at the knife here. Set the sheath aside. Okay, so here's the knife. It's actually a really nice looking knife. And it's got this kind of powder coated um, finish here, which I <laughs> tried to like buff off because there was little imperfections in the blade, so I tried to polish that off. It actually says here 25th anniversary edition, uh, what is it, 80, 82 to 2007, I think. Rainbow First Blood, and it has the number, it's 1129 out of 10,000. So it's a uh, pretty decent little knife. It actually looks like the blade isn't perfectly straight on it. I don't know if you can see that. It looks like it kind of angles that way a little bit. Um, but it's pretty sharp. Let's see, I have a piece of paper here. We can try to test it. So it does cut through paper. I don't think it's like a high carbon blade, I think it's stainless steel. So it would probably rust if it got wet, but you know, it's sharp, it's pointy. Um, it's got these teeth here, which I don't know how well those would do uh, actually sawing anything. They might work, I haven't really tried it yet. They've got this little like double groove, or like a groove in between, so there's two teeth on each one, which I like. So it might be more effective than other uh, sawback knives. Um, 
And on the hilt, you've got a Phillips screwdriver, and then along with a slot screw. Um, I can't imagine any scenario where you could spin a sharp knife around something you needed unscrewed, but I suppose it's a possibility. And at least you would have those tools on there. Um, you never know. Um, so that's something to think about. Uh, the handle. This is actually a uh, cord wrapped handle, but it comes green, like kind of like bright forest green. So I have taken uh, fabric glue, and um, I can actually show that here. This stuff right here, Tulip Slick, I use for a lot of things. It's actually pretty cool. It almost reminds me of that um, that bed liner stuff people are spraying on everything nowadays, because it just kind of turns into rubber. So you squirt it on there, smooth it in, and let it dry. And um, I don't like, I didn't like the rope feel. It just, it didn't feel right. And I didn't really like the look of it. It was like bright green. So I made it black. It matches the sheath. It's tacky. Uh, it's got a good grip to it. So and it's kind of waterproof. So it actually feels really nice. So something else I did to it. Uh, we can... Take a look inside the handle here. If you undo the hilt, it just unscrews. It's pretty nice. It's got a little uh, O-ring around there to help seal it in. Uh, but I don't think it's watertight up top, so that wouldn't really matter. But, you know. And then it probably has one of the cheapest compasses I've, I've ever seen here. Um, is it already broke? Looks like it wants to try to work. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think it's kind of broken. Yeah, it looks like it's broke. So, cheap little compass. Um, you might be able to get that to work. I don't know how reliable it would be. Uh, the one thing I did like is that pommel. It's very, it's flat. It's almost like a, the diameter of like a hammer head. So you could. You bang stuff with that or just use that as a flat surface so that's kind of cool but yeah it's a bummer that oh there it is yeah that is the direction of true north so the compass does work it's just not very reliable you gotta shake it a little bit okay so the handles hollow let me talk about that real quick before we look at the contents of the survival kit that it comes with um, I've actually got some shoelace down in there, just as extra cordage. But all there basically is, is uh, the tang is just like a little piece of metal with screws and then there's a bolt that, or a nut that screws on there um, and secures it into the hilt, kind of wedges it in there. So this is not something that you could use for batoning wood or things like that or prying. Eventually it's going to wiggle loose or break. So this is just strictly something you'd want to use for cutting, uh, things like that. You could kind of dig at stuff, and I mean, there's there's just limits to the abuse it could take. So that's definitely a limitation as far as a bushcraft knife. But it seems pretty sturdy. I think everything in here is metal, so there's nothing plastic that's going to break like those real chintzy, hollow-handled plastic survival knives. Um, so then, yeah, we've got the uh, little capsule. This looks pretty watertight. So I guess if you, like, did get submerged, these should be okay. Probably wouldn't want to, like, swim with the knife on. And there's a little more stuff in here than your average uh, survival kit. We'll set the knife aside for just a minute. Um, so there's a couple, couple thick needles. Those are good. And then a scalpel blade, surgical blade. You've got your striker for your matches. Your matches, these look pretty cheap. One of the heads is already deteriorated off of there. The others look like they would strike, so you got like five or six of them. And a sinker, a couple of those. 
little lead weights, and then um, these fishing hooks. They're kind of nice little fishing hooks. Um, obviously cheap, but catch a decent sized fish. They appear to be sharp. You get two of them, so you have two of each. And then a length of uh, fishing line, which looks pretty sturdy. So, I mean, I would say <clears throat> matches are a little bit questionable. I would hope they would work if needed. You've got some other other gear here, which is could help in a survival situation. So taken together, um, I actually kind of like the knife. It's um, you know it's got a good length to it. It's about nine. I think it has a nine inch blade. Um, it's not too unwieldy. Uh, obviously, I mean, it would be a great knife if it was like full tang and you could rely on it not snapping at the, the handle, but you know, you, it's unfortunately a hollow handled survival knife. So that's going to be a limitation. But I think that people sell this knife short as just a collector's knife and a looker, but I do think there is some practical use to it as a, a survival knife. You could definitely, you know, cut cord and, you know, do things around camp. You could probably even skin an animal with it, I would think. Um, I, again, I've only used it in limited capacity, but that's kind of my impression of it. So I just wanted to show you, you know, what I have for this knife and what I've done to it and my opinion of it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.